Scarlett Johansson is here. She is a very, very talented actress. She has two new films. Lost in Translation is already in theaters. It stars Bill Murray and is directed by Sofia Coppola. Her other film is A Girl with a Pearl Earring. It is an adaptation of the best-selling novel by Tracy Chevalier. And here is the trailer for the film. Colin Firth, Scarlett Johansson, Tom Wilkinson in the mystery behind the masterpiece. With a pearl earring. He looked inside me. Pleased to welcome Scarlett Johansson to this table for the very first time. Welcome. Why, thank you. It's great to see you here. Now look at this. This is the New York Times uh, in the art section. Smoldering Daughter of Delph, which was <laughs> where Vermeer painted. Um, this is the painting, and this is you. That's How right. That? What do you think? I think it's pretty good, actually. Pretty good for... You are 19 now. You just had a birthday. I just had a birthday. Yeah. yeah. And how long have you wanted to act? Did, has this been a lifelong dream? I have been, well, I've been acting since professionally since I was eight years old. And um, I, I don't know, I was a big ham, I suppose. I was one of those kids that used to sing and dance and run around. And I wanted to be, you know, Judy Garland and meet me in St. Louis and... I wanted to be, you know, Rosalind Russell and Andrew Mame. Yeah, I wanted to and be. You wanted to entertain. In movies, yeah, I wanted to sing and dance, and I don't know. Did you early on have the confidence that you could do it? Um, I'd say I was a pretty confident um, little girl. Um, yeah, certainly. I used to make everybody pay to come and see my little shows that I put on. So what I was, would you charge them? <laughs> I don't know. You know, a dollar. I was uh, I was hustling at the time. Mm. Now, your mother played a much a significant role. Oh yeah, she still does. She's uh, your wife, my manager. manager. Um, we've been we've used every every resource that I've collected from being in this business since since the age of eight to try to develop films and and get movies that you know projects that we've been coddling made. And so she remains um, huge hugely in my life. It's great if it works out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you know, it's awful you when it trust. doesn't. And no, and no, but it's exactly that. Because yeah. if it works out, you trust them. You know they'll be protective of you. You know they want your best interest. Mm. If it's awful, they're always driving you from their ambitions, not from yours. Yeah, it's, and it's ugly and not It's fun. very ugly. I've, I've witnessed a lot of that, you know, being a little girl and, and pounding the pavement with my mom. And it's, uh, it's a very, I think that it's very... There's a lot of uh, conflict between what kids want to do and, you know, what their parents envision for them, and um, it's it's a scary kind of thing. But How, and critics praise you a lot. I mean, they both of these performances are very good, and you're getting huge notices, and you know that, so there's no need to uh, not to appreciate that. How did you get this good? What what's the was it a lot of just working all the time? Was it very good teachers at important moments? Was it good advice and working with great talent that helped you? All um, of that plus. You know, it's hard when you're presented with something, you know, how'd you get this good? You know, because yeah. for me, I. I understand. Think, and I try well, to make the question better, but that's the best I can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's not too bad. You know, I'm the self deprecating actor yeah, exactly that, right. you know, goes, no, no, oh, exactly what was right. me? I'm oh, so awful. Oh, shucks. No. Right. You know, um, but please keep it coming. that by the fact that critics said this, not you. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I, um, you know, I, I constantly struggle with this stuff I do. I still see scenes in films that I've done and go, God, why did I make that choice? Or why did they use that take? Or, you know, yeah. <laughs> what's wrong with the intonation in my voice and, and all of that. Um, but do, you, do you sense that it, there's this very steep learning curve that you continue to, to grow on? In other words, at every step, you're getting better. You can feel it because of, I mean. I think that, I think that it, it's interesting that the more films that you make that are successful it seems the more there's a certain pressure on you to keep making great films and to keep being you know you know fantastic in them um, that's a sort of scary thing um, on the other hand when you're just starting out you you want to be amazing and you 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 want to get noticed and it's a certain drive that you have I think that there's a certain jaded quality that comes with 
um, success and recognition. So for me, of course, I'm constantly learning every experience I have um, working on and off set, um, but you know, I constantly struggle with whether I am becoming jaded or whether I'm able to step outside of what I'm doing and kind of have a look in, you know, that I think that tunnel of vision gets narrower and narrower, you know, th the more and more you work. And um, I recently talked to Sean Penn about, he's got two new movies out, as you know, Mystic River on the one hand and 21 Grams, and they're both brilliant performances. And, and in the conversation, he just said, this was for 60 Minutes too. he said, you know, it's just at 45, it's just come together. And he's had a lot of rather remarkable performances before. He's been nominated a bunch of times. But he feels like something has sort of come together. There's a, you know, I think he feels stronger about his work than he's ever done in the performances. It's I think it's something that happens to you as as you get older. I think you go through periods when you doubt very much what right. you're doing. And or should be doing it or should be doing something else. Right, right. And other periods, I suppose, when you... You know, when everything just seems to be, when you seem to know yourself really well, and and I think as a, with a job, you know, being an actor, it's a very strange sort of profession. You're manipulating your emotions all the time. It's very unnatural, going against the grain, and um, and I think that it's something that the more you know about yourself, and it seems to be the more you grow, you know, and the older you get, you're able to have more things to sort of pick and choose from. Um, and, and know yourself, um, you know, better and better, I suppose. Any similarities between these two women, Charlotte and Greek? Um, I think they're very different characters. I, I, I think that they're both, un, you know, unquestionably observant, but for me, Greek, you think, you feel as though she could conquer anything. You know, she yes. could survive anything. Right. The plague, the household. Right. The <laughs> Greek being, if you haven't seen the movie, is the model for Vermeer. That's right. And um, and Charlotte, I think, needs Bob Harris, who's played by Bill Murray in Lost in Translation. She needs him to help her get through her, you know, 24-year-old midlife crisis. Yeah, meaning that her husband's always on the go, and she doesn't quite know where she fits in and right. what she's doing, and all of a sudden there's this guy at a hotel who's a at the tail end of a career, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they find each other. They find each other and they they somehow, by the end of the film, it, although it's incredibly sad and bittersweet, and I still get very upset every time I see the ending because it makes me sad, I don't know why, but you, you feel as though they'll be okay somehow, that they found some familiarity in each other, and I, I think you mean they helped, whatever happens to them, they will be both benefit from the relationship that took place at a hotel in Tokyo. Mm, and they're somehow forever changed by it, I think. How was she changed, do you think? I think that she was inspired to, to be enthusiastic and she is inspired by this romance. I think that the idea, she's feeling so sort of shallow in the beginning of this film. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea that two people can meet in a hotel, in a foreign place, with completely different, in completely different places in their lives, and have a deep, deep love for one another, and a certain understanding, and just knowing that there's somebody out there that's just going through the same thing, inspires her to be able to kind of move away from it um, and it's it's very beautiful. Was one more difficult than the other to perform? Um, There's not a lot of dialogue. Not in either one really. Um, I Girl with a Pearl Earring was one of the easiest jobs I've ever had. <laughs> um, because? <laughs> I mean it was it was physically draining and yeah. I was cold and I was you know tired and uh, overworked but yeah. Um, but it was so incredibly fulfilling and just being on the set, being in that lighting, being in those costumes with Colin and, you know, with Tom and having such an incredible ensemble around me, it just felt every day, I felt like I was coming back with a lot, um, you know, full stomach. Being on Lost in Translation, it was so kind of fast and so jerky that I felt very alienated, and um, it was more difficult for me to, to cope with being on that production. Um, so I'd say that was, it was more difficult that, that in some way. This is Girl with a Pearl Earring, in, in which uh, Vermeer, played by Firth, asked Greet uh, 
to describe the colors she sees in clouds to him. Here it is. Yellow. Blue and gray. There are colors in the clouds. Now you understand. <laughs> you look like a peeled egg. <laughs> That's what Colin would say. <laughs> she but looks like, like a peeled egg. <laughs> I look like a peeled egg in that, but he's a hairy mongrel. In his he's a hairy mongrel and you're a peeled egg? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot, it's a huge comedy doing drama and people have rarely realized. Yep. How did you get up for this? What did you do? Did you do anything? Did you go try to get inside of understanding Vermeer and the paintings and, and did you read the novel? Did you do what? Um, none I, of the above. I, none of the above. You didn't even read the novel? <laughs> I did not read the novel, But you no. had the script, so it didn't matter. I had the script. I didn't want the novel. Did you read the script? I, um, what script? <laughs> what are we doing here? Momentary lapse of... You know. um, but I, I just... Yeah, I, I didn't read the book. I... I don't know. Some actors may have studied it. I didn't want it. It's written in first person. I just didn't want the first person narrative. I thought it would be yeah. harmful. And um, I read it afterwards, which was kind of bizarre because I had it all cast in my mind. You know, Tom Wilkinson yeah. playing the Van Ryan right. character. So when you read the book, you visualized people. The well, cast that you did work with. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, although I didn't, I couldn't quite get into the first person of my own character because I had had my own experiences with longing and and devastation and heartbreak and I it was difficult for me to put myself in the shoes of that girl I don't know roll tape here's another scene from girl with a pearl earring can you imagine yourself in such finery greet she loved it you know lace and satin pressed tight against her plump little bobbies the silk Heavy on her thighs, the gentleman watching. Now, why is he obsessed with her? Oh. Other than the obvious. He's so off. I think it is the obvious. <laughs> um, exactly that. Um, he is a lecherous, lascivious, awful yeah. man. And um, the funny thing about Tom is that he, you know, we did this. Uh, there's an awful scene in the film where where he's trying to rape my character and it's really scary and I'm thinking get away from me I don't want you anywhere near me and we have this huge struggle you know and at the end he says you better not tell anybody and then they say cut and he'd go oh are you okay did I hurt your arm <laughs> Tom how am I supposed to do another take of this you can't be nice don't be nice to me <laughs> yeah he's um he's he's fabulous now these are two stories in which we'll see lost in translation in a moment these are two stories Sophia has been here two stories in which there is an older man and a younger woman yes yes that is you learn true. anything about relationships between younger men and older women um well, yes. younger women and older men yes I I, <laughs> I learned that they're quite complicated and um, <laughs> you know it's funny because for me I would never I would never you know I'm, I'm very open-minded and I would never nix any kind of thing but I think that in both of these I found that the characters are in such different places in their lives that it, it's exactly why neither of them work, you know. I mean, I think if Vermeer had come to greet and been, and had caressed her, she would say, take me, I'm yours, you know, but he, he, he doesn't do that. He's, yeah. He has a family and right. you look at Bill's character and he's in such a different place and could never taint that relationship. Yeah, they didn't come on as seducers. Yeah, no, If they come true. on as seducers, it, it might have been a different thing. Not like Tom Wilkinson. <laughs> <laughs> he's more than a seducer. All know. right, well, let me see now, I've seen from Lost in Translation, just to give us audience a sense of, of, of how remarkably different these performances are. Uh, in the context of what we have just said. This is where Bob Harris, played by Bill Murray, he's in Tokyo to do some commercials and this is where he meets Charlotte. So, you having a nice time? Can you keep a secret? I'm trying to organize a prison break. I'm looking for like an accomplice. <laughs> We'd have to first get out of this bar, then the hotel, then the city, and then the country. Are you in or are you out? I'm in. How is he to work with? Oh, he's so good. He's so <laughs> fabulous in that. Um, he comes prepared. Yeah, he's he is so prepared when he, you know, he, he knows himself so well. He's been doing it for so long, and he brings so much to the table that 
it was really easy for me um, to, you know, when the cameras were rolling, everything just sort of came together. Um, we didn't have to discuss, we didn't have to do so much rehearsal, it just kind of was spontaneous and, um, and, uh, and easy, I don't know. But he's also aloof and distant at times. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I, I've heard oftentimes comedians can be that way. Um, I think that in Com a, comedic actors. Yeah, yeah, comedic actors. I mean, in a sense, they're sort of, uh, they're sort of, you know, they're um, so self-deprecating in a way. They're taking so much sort of out of themselves, sort of deflating themselves at times. I think, and I think that can. I, I think that sometimes they're on and. And sometimes they're very feeling very private, um, and um, I think both of us felt um, we're so exhausted <laughs> from this schedule that you know all we wanted to do on our off time was just you know eat McDonald's and stare at the floor. It must be great too, because of these performances, but others, you know, that's been building. You know, the better you are, the b better roles you get. The better roles you'll be offered. Yes. You know, I mean, I just saw Cole Mountain, and I thought both. Nico it's a it's a movie, f as, as good as Jude is. I mean, it is really Nicole's movie, and it is Renee's movie. I mean, it's for my money. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is extraordinary, as good as Jude is. Mm. And you think Nicole, those two people must be getting, must be the best of their times too, because they have grown to a place, where, they'll have such creative opportunities, mm. such opportunities to stretch and grow in parts because the best directors and the best writers and the best producers want to work with them you yes. know, and you've arrived at that point I suspect especially because of age you get a choice of films that are age yeah relevant well it's I mean that's what's because people have often asked me you know well what are the perks of being in this kind of position you know the the, the it girl yeah, right. whatever that means um, Nobody can tell me who the it girl was of 2002, so that <laughs> no, kind of worries I don't me. Exactly, I don't know if that's exactly right. <laughs> but um, whoever she was, she ain't. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. She's the once was an it girl girl. Yeah, right. She's the former uh, it girl. Um, <laughs> They're in seclusion in Rome. <laughs> yeah, right. oh my God, it's me in here. Ah, uh, <laughs> um, I don't want to be the it girl because I don't want to be yesterday. Uh, don't say that. Don't say it girl. I don't want to know that I've arrived. I don't uh, want to know yeah, exactly any of this. Exactly right. So none of that's um, happened to you. No. So what is it? Well, I, I guess. It's not a perk. It is a what? It's, it's what are the perks of this job? You know that that's what people are saying. And I say, well, you know, of course, there's wonderful perks like being shuffled around and having people take care of you and all that. Right. You know, people seem to think that actors are invalids and can't you know open a car door for themselves. You know, um, maybe you can some can't. Open can. a car door by yourself. Um, I learned just about last year, yeah, <laughs> yes, around this well, time. This is um, before you were the idiot. <laughs> that's right. Now I'm worried I'm going to lose it. <laughs> All right. So, so what is what is it? it it's is, not that. It is the ability to go into a studio and say, "Look, I know this part is written for a 29-year-old person. Okay, I can't quite make it to 29. Can we make the part younger? Do you think we could develop this project that I've had in my mind forever? It's being able to take projects like Marjorie Morningstar, which is a project that I've been you know, sort of, that I read the book and yeah, called right. my mom and said, I am Marjorie, and she said, that's what I thought. We just kind of, you know. So have you optioned that or done something with it? Or yeah, we're in the, pro you know, it's over at Universal Focus, and right. we're, and we're, you know, working on that now, and being and able to do that. Who played the original Marjorie? Uh, Natalie Wood. Oh, okay. Natalie Wood, so. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, that kind of thing is something that just keeps, you're always afraid you're going to lose it, but while the wheel is in motion, you just got to have to keep it turning, you know. Um, and that's an incredible feeling, um, and I'm unbelievably fortunate to be able to do that as a 19-year-old person, as an actor, as a working actor who gets paid to do what they love, mm. and go into a studio and say, look, I have these ideas, will you take me seriously, creatively, mm. please? Now, did that happen with with Charlotte? I mean, was that a twenty nine year old who became a twenty five, a twenty four year old? Um, I think that everybody was sort of. I think Sophia said Scarlett Johansson, and everybody said, "Well, she's too young." Yeah, she's too young, and she said she's not too young, and she really was 
was, you know, sort of my, um, she was, she was really there for me, um, from the get-go, and I think really fought for me, and didn't have to fight too hard, I think she just said, Scarlett, she's old enough, okay, let's get Bill now. <laughs> what is it you think be. you need to learn? Do I think I need to no, learn? No, what is it you think you need to learn? I mean, where, where do you think you need to grow at, at the tender age of 19? Oh. What's, what needs work on? I am, um, I don't, I know that I should probably be more patient than I am with things, but I don't like to be patient because I feel like you should strike while the iron's hot and get things going. I mean, nobody advocates for you like you do for yourself. You know, if you, you kind of get left by the, you know, by the wayside unless you keep pushing forward and, um, but I'm sure there's times when I am impatient um, and I guess that's something that, you know, is a virtue that I'll just try to keep reminding myself of and trying to remind myself to be compassionate and those things, but, um... There's a sense of urgency. Yeah, I'm always, the yeah. Mo the moment is red hot. Mm, that's why, I, you know, all of my dreams, I'm sure if you analyze them, are filled with anxiety all the time because even in my regular life, I may be very relaxed, but apparently in my subconscious, I'm dying to get what things done. What kind of dreams do you have? Well, I have, you know, with, now that we're shooting in Italy, I've had the most bizarre dreams ever. You know, I, I have, I had a dream the other night that I was walked into my new apartment and it was huge and I ran around going it's mine it's all mine <laughs> I don't know what that means but <laughs> that wasn't exactly an anxiety dream that was just bizarre um, you know I'm always losing things I can never get to where I need to go I can never fly when something's chasing me I have all those dreams where I know I can fly if I could just get off the ground these stupid wings they, you know they won't go and I have all those awful anxiety yeah. dreams you know? Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for having You're me. You're quite wonderful. It's a <laughs> delight to have you. Much success with it's all of this. It's been a pleasure. This. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.